Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Brett Talley Daniel, and Raleigh, and headache doctor. I'm going to talk today on what is vestibular migraine. First I want to define some of the terms. So vertigo is a feeling of movement that comes from the Latin word which means to turn. It's like your feeling you get when you're spinning around in a circle a couple of times and then you stop. It's a feeling one gets on a merry-go-round when you've been turned around and stand off. Although usually rotary in motion at the patient in the center, vertigo can also be, per be perception motion on the part of the patient. Thus, vertigo can be non-rotary and include a sense of linear or up and down movement. They call it internal vertigo is a false sensation of self motion, while external vertigo is the false sensation that the visual surround or spinning is going. It's either you're spinning or the world around you is spinning, those two terms. Vertigo may originate in the vestibular branch of the eighth cranial nerve in the inner ear, where it's called peripheral or end organ in origin, or in the brain, usually in the cerebellum or brainstem, where it's referred to as being central. And something like 90% of persons who have vertigo have peripheral or inner ear location, and about 10% have it in the brainstem or cerebellum. Positional vertigo occurs after a change in head position. There may be visually induced vertigo triggered by a complex of large moving visual stimulus. The vestibular symptoms are rated moderate when they don't interfere with and don't prevent daily activities and severe when daily activities cannot be continued. Sometimes severe attack of vertigo puts you in bed and you can't move. The durations of episodes are highly variable. About 30% of patients have episodes lasting minutes. 30% have attacks for hours. Another 30% has attacks over several days. The remaining 10% of it has attacks that are short acting, just like seconds, which incur only with head movement. Like if you turn your head, move, or look left, or stand up suddenly, or look down, you get a few waves of vertigo. So what is vestibular migraine? I'm going to give you a definition according to the International Classification of Headache Disorder Version 3. And they define vestibular migraine as the following. They first state they've been a previously used term. They've called it migraine-associated vertigo slash dizziness, migraine-related vestibulopathy, and migranous vertigo. So the diagnostic criteria are A, at least five episodes fulfilling criteria C and D. B is you have to have a current past history of migraine with or without aura. you got to have migraine. C, vestibular symptoms are moderate, severe, lasting, at least five minutes to 72 hours. So it's not a couple of seconds. The last half of the episode is associated with at least one of the following three migraineous features, and those are headache with at least two of the following characteristics. Two of the out of four here are got headaches going to be one-sided, migraines are one-sided, throbbing, pulsating, moderate or severe. So on a scale of uh, one to 10, they're over five. And they're aggravated by routine physical activity. So migraine patients want to be lying down in bed, as do vertigo patients. Two, patients should have photophobia and phonophobia. And three, visual aura. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about those individual statements a little bit. So photophobia means light sensitivity. So the patient avoids the light, which worsens the headache. Migraine patients are usually sensitive to light anyway, all the time, but... During a migraine, light just makes it much worse. It hurts. Phonophobia and sonophobia are similar terms. It means that sound causes the head to hurt or makes the headache worse. Visual auras are characterized by bright, scintillating lights or zigzag lines that will occur often with a scotoma, which means like a blind spot where you can't see through anything. Um, that can interfere with reading. Visual auras typically expand over 5 to 20 minutes and last less than 60 minutes by definition. Okay, well, what's the medical neurologic ENT evaluation for vestibular migraine? Well, first got to take a history and do a physical exam, and then a neurologic workup complete would include ENT uh, evaluation and consultation and neurologic consults, and they all should be normal. Testing such as blood work, an audiogram, which is a hearing test, vestibular testing, MRI scans or CT scans of the cerebral arteries, a brain and CAT scan or an MRI scan should all be normal. Other symptoms uh, such as short-acting 
short-lasting auditory symptoms, nausea, vomiting, prostration, motion sickness, may be associated with vestibular migraine, but since they also occur with other medical problems and other vestibular problems, they're not included as diagnostic features. The anatomy. So vestibular refers to the inner ear. In Latin, vestibule means an entrance hall. How beautiful, isn't that cool? The vestibule is a central part of the bony labyrinth in the inner ear, situated medial to the eardrum, which is the tympanic membrane, behind the cochlea and in front of the three semicircular canals. It's an entrance hall. The chemoreceptor trigger zone mediates vomiting, and that's located in the medulla oblongata, which is part of the brain stem. The chemoreceptor trigger zone is near the entry of the eighth nerve, which carries hearing and balance information. I'll never forget my anatomy first year of medical school. We were doing human anatomy. We were doing the brain at the time. They had this little pin stuck in the chemoreceptor trigger zone. You had to answer vomit center or chemoreceptor trigger zone. In the inner ear, the semicircular canals respond to rotational movements, such as angular acceleration, and the utricle and saccule in the inner ear respond to changes in position of the head with respect to gravity or linear acceleration. Migraine with and without aura have a brainstem generator in the periodical gray part of the mesencephalon near where the labyrinthine fibers from the inner ear interconnects. They're kind of all hooked together in a sense. Migraine causes more vertigo than any other medical condition. The incidence of migraine in the United States is 12%, while the incidence of Meniere's syndrome, Meniere's disease, is 0.2%. About 50% of patients with Meniere's disease have migraine. Neurologic practices focusing on the headache report episodic vertigo in 27 to 42% of all migraine patients. Dizziness, vertigo, tinnitus, photophobia, hearing loss, and nystagmus, which is a jerky movement of the eyes, may accompany migraine. Vestibular migraine may occur without a headache, which makes it hard to sort that out. So Typical acute and preventive treatment for migraine may improve vertiginous, migraineous vertigo. Now, migraine and vertigo have had a long relationship. So, neurology textbooks over the last 50 years have all listed vertigo under the long list of symptoms associated with migraine. And I studied Merritt's textbook of neurology in about 1966 in medical school, and it had in there in a short several pages regarding migraine. They talked about vertigo even then. There's currently a large body of link literature linking vertigo with migraine. And uh, articles are written every year. Many ENT and neurology articles are published every year on migraine and vertigo. I've been seeing that for years. All right, dizziness. Let me talk about dizziness a minute. Dizziness is a much less precise medical term than vertigo. and It has multiple causes. Uh, dizziness does not localize to a specific area of the brain like vertigo does. Dizziness may be described the patient as, quote, lightheaded, giddy, near faintness, swimmy headed, off balance, or unsteadiness. Dizziness has a large group of different causes and may be due to it. I'm going to list these group of things here. It could be an inner ear inflammation, hypoglycemia, electrolyte imbalance, low blood pressure, decreased cardiac output, anemia, anxiety or panic disorder, hyperventilation, medication effects, or many other causes. Okay, so what's the clinical course of vestibular migraine? It's characterized by episodic symptoms of severe vertigo with or without headache, which may significantly interfere with the patient's quality of life. The symptoms are very life disruptive when they come, and oftentimes the patient is anxious waiting for the next attack, which may come because it's a chronic problem. With attacks may come lasting months or years, separated periods of time of normal health. Now, vestibular migraine may be familial or sporadic. And Luzario reported in neurology in 2019 that there was a familial occurrence reported in some patients with an autosomal dominant pattern of inheritance and a decreased penetrance in men. The genetics of vestibular migraine are heterogeneous and uncertain, but several studies suggest linkage to chromosome 5Q35 or 22Q12. Episodes may follow the usual migraine triggers of stress, overwork, anxiety.
anxiety, depression, insomnia, before or after stress, the so-called migraine letdown headache, or fasting. Although all ages may have affected, it's usually worse for young adults, about 20, 30 year olds. Vestibular migraine is generally underdiagnosed, yet it's the most common cause of recurrent spontaneous vertigo attacks. Now, the International Fellowship of Headache Disorders and the Barani Association, which is an ear, nose, throat association, accepted criteria for diagnosis of vestibular migraine in 2012. On close questioning, most patients can differentiate between vertigo and migraine. Complicating this situation is the fact that the current dizziness in the general population is over 20%. However, patients who have migraine with aura have significantly more dizzy spells than non-headache patients. Dizziness in general is strongly associated with what are called functional, meaning psychologic medical problems, such as generalized anxiety disorder or panic attack. Okay, what about migraine and motion sickness? Another interesting and well-known link to migraine is motion sickness, which usually comes on in childhood and improved with ages. And the symptoms of motion sickness may be nausea, dizziness, vertigo. Commonly, children experience this in the back of the car while they're riding. It also occurs when reading in the car, participating in amusement park rides, especially rides with fast circular movements and on boats and airplanes. Most studies report that about 60% of patients with migraine have motion sickness, while only 5 to 20% of persons without migraine have motion sickness. Now, I was proud to serve the U.S. Navy in San Diego at the end of the Vietnam conflict with a center commander. And uh, the Navy has a statement which is, really, is true that if you have motion sickness, your duty is to take those persons out of the service. And I had to uh, board a guy out of the service from Midwest during I didn't know he really had for Vietnam. Boy, they might have back back to Belva where I was. Our incidents of migraine the practices that special migraine find that forty two patients and about thirty six of these migraineurs get very have no headache just before or during the headache. Migraine with our patients have a higher risk of vertigo than those who have migraine without our. The cause of this is that practices that specialize in vertigo find 16 to 32 patients have migraine. There's another relationship here also should be mentioned. That's a relationship to benign paroxysmal vertigo. Vestibular migraine occur at any age while benign paroxysmal vertigo Childhood disorder. Paroxysmal vertigo is diagnosed by five episodes of vertigo occurring without solving spontaneously after minutes. Neurologic examination, audiometry, vestibular functions, and EEG are normal between episodes. One sided throbbing headache may occur during attacks, but it's not necessarily. Benign paroxysmal vertigo is a precursor of migraine, which may develop more fully with age. And Vestibular migraine does not have an age limit and may be children and adults in the proper diagnostic criteria. Well, what about vestibular migraine and Meniere's disease? Migraine is more common in patients with Meniere's disease than in healthy controls. Many patients have migraine, vestibular migraine, and Meniere's disease, which may be inherited as a disease cluster. Vestibular migraine have fluctuating hearing tinnitus oral pressure, like pressure in the ear, but the hearing loss doesn't progress over time to deafness, which is noted and seen on an audiogram, like with Meniere's disease. In the first year after onset symptoms, differentiating between these two entities is challenging, since Meniere's disease can be monosymptomatic with symptoms in the early stages of the disease, but the doctor just won't know until other symptoms develop. has a clinical course, usually a progression toward sensory neuro both ears, usually starts with one ear, may switch to the other time with attacks of vertigo, tinnitus, and deafness. Tinnitus is a ringing or sounds in the ear. Well, what is the differential diagnosis of vestibular migraine? A large group of things, but it includes 
brain stem are up. Brain stem infarct, which means stroke. Autoimmune inner ear disease, multiple sclerosis, early disease, vertebral or ischemia, a cerebellar tumor, and Arnold mal. Well, what's pathology? The relationship between vestibular migraine and and particularly at the onset, symptoms may be difficult to differentiate the two conditions. But um, pathology of Meniere's disease will show sensory neuro deafness, whereas migraine generally just has some uh, dots on the MRI scan, but otherwise has normal findings. What's the treatment of vestibular migraine? For acute treatment, triptans to date with randomized controlled studies have been inconclusive. Many headache doctors like to use one of the benzodiazepine drugs, which may work well. My own preference is to use diazepam, which is a generic of Valium, five to 10 milligrams at onset every four to six hours later. Nausea can be treated with antivert, transdermal scope patch, or um, generic with is PRN as needed, whatever. For medical devices, now gamma inhale neck delivered Vagal nerve stimulator can be tried. This is a new thing that's just out. It was published in 2019 on their study using this, and they stated in the results, quote, that the results indicate they provide preliminary evidence that um, vagal nerve stimulator may provide rapid relief of vertigo and headache and acute or migraine. Just a device you put in your neck and you give a little shock to the vagal nerve. Preventive therapy for vestibular migraine. Well, typical migraine preventive drugs such as topiramate, amitriptyline, beta blockers, and Depakote uh, for infertile women. Depakote should never be given to women who can get pregnant. Can be tried, but there's no little data on any of this works. We don't have any information really. The drugs of choice, I think, would probably be with the new CGRP drugs such as Amavig and Gallup or, J or Jovi. But again, ain't no data on this stuff. Yet referred to my article uh, in my web page, go to www.drmigraine.com and I have an article written on this and I have a huge bibliography for people who are interested in looking at that further. So thank you for listening. Please check subscribe and God bless all you people who have migraine, in particular vestibular migraine.